Good afternoon, my saints. Thank God we um, My snow out there. Yes, we are. Good snow. But we're here to deliver the word of God, do what he told us to do. Amen. Amen. So let us pray, Father, we thank you for bringing us over here safely. The one really is going to take us back safely. So we thank you for that. Father, you are the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're also the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're our Father. Praise God, we are your children. We ask that you will open our hearts here tonight and open our hearing so we can hear your word and understand it. We pray, I pray, that you will lead me by your Holy Spirit. Yes, you will. Guide me and direct me in everything I should say. Amen. Go with me to Proverbs uh, 4 chapter, please. 20th verse. We've been working on this a little while here. God's word is so important. This is why I tell you, you know, turn your phones off so you don't have no distractions. There's many voices in this world. And we need to hear his voice clearly so that we can follow him. Do what he say do. Uh, Proverbs 4.20 says, My son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the midst. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those that find them, and healing and health to all their flesh. Praise God for his word. You know, he's saying several things in just these few verses. He says in that 23rd verse, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. We know that Jesus said that the word is spirit and life, right? And it's, that's John 6, 63. And we also know in Psalm 103, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Now he's saying, he's telling us to pay attention to my words. So should we be leaning on what anybody else is saying? More than his word? No, not. We should put his words first in first place above everybody else's word. <clears throat> the reason for that, because his word is true, and they say that they are health and healing to all your flesh. Now, this is healing class. That means every one of his words has power. When God spoke, and everything came into creation. God didn't speak just to communicate something. He spoke to create something. Amen? Amen. And this is what I'm learning with my own words that I choose them more carefully now because when you find out that your words really have power, and me as a minister, I'm supposed to be edifying people. I don't want to say something to tear them down. And plus, I want to listen to what they're saying very carefully before I answer them. He says, open your ears to my saying. And he says, uh, do not let them escape from your sight. So we should keep our eyes on his word. And open our ears to what he's saying. He, what he's talking about here is your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears. Because, you know, you can hear something, you can quote a verse and, you know, read it over in, in the Bible here, and it may not have no effect on your mind at all. Say, so, yeah, I heard that verse. What else you got? Right? The way God's Word works, if you esteem His Word highly, you get the most out of it. Oh, yeah. 
But if you don't, if you just esteem, esteem it lightly, you're not going to get that much out of it. You're not really going to be understanding what he's even saying to you. Amen? And he says, let me read out of King James. It says, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes, keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now he's not talking about this blood pump in uh, the middle of our chest. He's talking about the heart of man, the core of man, the spirit of man. If we really could, you know, get a handle on this, that we are a spirit. And that inner man inside of us actually is a, our outer man is a reflection of the inner man. So if you got a weak inner spirit, most likely you're going to be weak on the outside too. Because it's a reflection. Because when we slip out of this body and go home, um, we're going to look the same way. To God, right? Because he's looking at the heart, he's looking at the spirit of man, right? Right. So we're going to look the same way. Amen. Now go with me to uh, 1 Peter, uh, the first chapter. Down at the uh, 23rd verse. 1 Peter 1, 23. For you have been born again, that is, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, set apart for his purpose, not of seed which is perishable, but from that which is imperishable and immoral, that is, through the living and everlasting word of God. King James said, uh, not corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed. <laughs> so when we were born, physically we were born of perishable seed. This, this body is decaying. It's, uh, it's decreasing every day. But our inner man is being renewed day by day. And it says here in verse 24, for the flesh is like grass, and all the glory like the flower of the grass. The grass withers, the flower falls, falls off. But the word of the God, the word of the Lord, endures forever. And this is the word, the good news of salvation, which was preached to you. That's how he got born again by his word. We heard it. Somebody say it. Somebody preached it to us, or somebody pulled us apart and told us about Jesus. When that, that seed got planted. Then we started going to church, and that seed got watered. Amen? We're over here watering a seed right now. Amen? Now, I saw this verse in Isaiah 40. Um, Isaiah, the 40th chapter. And I said, this is interesting because Isaiah is a prophet. And when you um, notice when you're reading through the New Testament, they're always quoting what a prophet has said or something. Jeremiah, Isaiah. Right. Now here in Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 6th verse says, A voice said, Call out, prophesy. Then he answered, then he answered, what should I call out? The voice answered, all humanity is as fertile as grass, and all that make it attractive, its charm, its loveliness, is momentary, like the flower of the field. The grass where the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, most certainly all people are like grass, 
The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord stands forever. That's just what Peter was saying, what the prophet was saying. Now, uh, go with me to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. Amen. Because, see, we got to get this word in us, and it's not... A mistake or anything that I'm going over the same thing that I've been going over for the third time. And it isn't because I don't have enough material to say the same thing. I'm going over it so that you can hear it and understand it. I don't want you to say, well, I know them verses or I know where they're at in the Bible. No, you need to understand it. Yes, of course. You need to pay attention to my words as the Bible says because that's what's going to be health to you because if you listen to his words say, say like uh, you're in critical condition and you listen to your, his word and you don't get no worse amen and you listen to it again and you don't get no worse so right away his word has stopped that sickness but you have to keep listening to it so your spiritual man will get strong enough so that you'll know it's God's will for you to be healed. Amen. That's one thing you got to know. You got to know that it's God's will for you to be healed. So By his stripes, we were healed. This is something that Jesus took care of over 2,000 years ago. Amen. 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 And you, if you saying that, um, well, God... Sometimes he says yes, sometimes he says no, sometimes he says wait. You never know what God's going to do. Are you going to get any healing behind that? That's not even a scripture. This, that came from people quoting things because they were looking for a healing and they didn't see it. But healing is spiritual. You got to believe that you received what you asked God from before you even see it, right? Faith is believing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That means confident expectations and the evidence of things not seen. But you're believing that you are healed. And by you believing God's word, way up above and over top of what, say, your doctor is telling you, what the nurses are telling you, what your mother or father may be telling you, or your brother and sisters. If you don't believe God's word, you got to say, no, by his stripes I was healed. I believe that I'm healed. I believe I received my healing. Well, it don't look like it. I didn't say I, I look like it. I said, I believe. I received my healing. Amen. How do you feel? I ain't talking about how I feel. I believe that I have received my healing. I know it's God's will for me to be healed. I believe that in my heart. I'm standing on the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen? Mm -hmm. First Corinthians, the uh, third chapter, starting at 6 first. It says, I planted apostle water, but God... All the while was causing the growth. Amen. Amen. That's right. It says, so neither is the one who plants nor the one who waters anything, but only God who causes the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one in importance and esteem, working toward the same purpose. But each will receive his own reward according to his own labors. For we are God's fellow workers, his servants working together. You are God's cultivated field, his garden, his vineyard, God's building. So, he said that you were born again by a seed, an imperishable seed, right? Amen? That's right. By the word of God. 
I'm here telling you, I'm planting another seed that it is God's will for you to be healed. Right. And also it says, by his stripes you were healed. And you go into Isaiah 53. Amen? Amen. We're going to plant this in your heart today. Isaiah 53. This is the word of God. This is what's true. It is the truth. <laughs> This is the truth, children. And this is what you got to stand on is the word of God. It says here, I, um, I'll start at the fourth verse. It says, but in fact, he bore our grief and he carried our sorrow and pain. Yet we had no ignorantly assumed he was stricken, but stricken, struck down by God and degraded and humiliated by him. He said that he carried our pains. So why are we carrying pains? Then he says, but he was wounded for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities our sins, our injustice, our wrongdoing, the punishment required for our well-being fell on him. And by his stripes, his wounds, we are healed. Now the prophet prophesied that way before Jesus came into the earth. Amen? And Peter picked it up. 1 Peter 1.24 picks it up. He's saying the same thing because you got to keep putting this in your head because if you don't, you're going to start believing what the news media and every your doctor is saying, what your sister and brother is saying, and everybody else is saying, and you uh, will be stuck because that's the wrong kind of water. It says here in uh, 1 Peter 2.24, he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, willingly offering himself on it as on an altar of sacrifice, so that we might die to sin, becoming immune from the penalty and power of sin, and alive for righteousness. For by his wounds you who believe have been healed. Amen. This is so important, kids, because you are God's, it says here in this ninth verse of First Corinthians third chapter, you are God's guard. His, his, his vineyard, his field, his garden. It says cultivated fields, his garden, his vineyard. So that means God has already planted the seed for us to be born again. Amen? Yeah, and if you, guessing. I'm over here, I'm planting and watering the seed that you can be healed. And this is something that a lot of people need to hear right now because do you realize a lot of people are leaving up out of this world that don't have to leave up out of this world? Yes. yes because they're believing a lot. I'm going to just put it like that. They're being deceived. And they're running around there getting all these tests and all these uh, vaccines. Now, I got the vaccines myself. I'm also scheduled for a booster shot. But if you look for something hard enough, the Bible says if you seek, you're going to find. Amen? Is that what this word says? If you seek, you will find. If you look hard enough for coronavirus, you're going to find it. I mean, if you tested yourself every morning and, and, you know, every day of the week, you're going to find it. He's telling you, God is telling you to put his word first in your life. And his word says you were, have been healed. You were healed, you have been healed. So if you put his word first, Go, you go get your vaccines, you get your booster shot and everything, and you keep on doing what you were doing. Amen? And they, Amen. you know, these people are making a fortune 
off of this stuff. There's people that are becoming trillionaires behind this. They're past billionaires. You know what I mean? Don't let the world tell you something that your Bible is telling you different. Now, I'm trusting what the Word of God says. But one thing I'm not going to be doing is running up on a whole lot of people and being in these large crowds where you can't get six feet apart because you don't know what they got up in there. Amen? Amen. And most of these uh, jobs, uh, the facilities we go through, they have a sign on there if you got a fever or you're coughing or, you know, a whole list of it, don't Stay come home. in here. And the minute that you have, you say you got the, uh, the virus, you can't come up in there for, what is it, seven days now? Well, it's 10. Depending on how sick you get. Yes, yeah. yeah. They keep changing. But one reason why this don't work in a lot of people's life, this, uh, what we're talking about here, because they have fear of their life. What they're doing, they're believing a lie. And they're being deceived. No, I'm not being deceived. I'm just going by what the CDC says and what the news people say. And all. You're being deceived. Because it wouldn't be a deception if you knew that you were deceived. Amen? It wouldn't be. Come with me to Isaiah 50. Let's get a little deeper in this today. Isaiah 55, one of my wife's favorite chapters. And I have, I've been meditating on it too. Because when she teaches, I write down all the scripture that she teaches about, and then I go back and I meditate on it. Amen? Now here in the 50, Isaiah 55 at the 6th verse, It says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Amen. Call on him for salvation while he is near. That's right. That's what the word says. Seek God where he may be found. As long as you're on this earth in this dispensation we live in, in this time period we live in, you can seek the Lord. Amen? Amen. There's nothing stopping you. It says, let the wicked leave behind his ways mm -hmm. and the unrighteous man his thoughts. That's right. And let him return to the Lord. So he's telling you two things here. You've got to leave behind your ways. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And your thoughts. So whatever thoughts that you have picked up from what you have heard from people saying, you need to leave it alone. Leave it alone. Just leave that alone. Because he says here, and let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion, mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God won't hold it against you for your unrighteous and your thoughts and your ways. Amen? Your wickedness. He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, declares the Lord, for as, he for as the heavens are higher than the earth, right. so are my ways higher than your ways, That's right. and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. That's right. Now he's talking about the wicked man here. Right. Because if you've been in the Word of God long enough, you're thinking like Him. Right. The Bible says that His sheep know His voice. That's right. And they won't follow a stranger. Mm -hmm. they, can t they can pick it up right then. They see, they can de discern between good and evil. When, when you've been reading this Word enough and meditating on this Word and putting His Word first in your life, you have a strong spirit. Amen? And it's getting stronger and stronger, and you're able to discern between good and evil. Good when somebody starts opening their mouth telling you something, you can pick it up right away and say, that's a lie. You know what I mean? 
So he says here, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, making it bare and sprout and providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my words which go forth out of my mouth, they will not return to me void, useless, without result. That's right. Without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent. That's right. If you say you healed, you're going to be healed. So, That's in the word. See, God, see, we use words so... Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people say, well, I'm just saying. And they shouldn't just say. And, and you really, sh you don't need to get that phrase out of your vocabulary, I'm just saying. Because when God says something, things change. Mm -hmm. When he said, let there be light, it was, it was light. Mm -hmm. And everything that God made was good. It was good. And see, God didn't just use his words to create. Uh, to just talk, communicate with us. See, that's why a lot of people get this confused. They say, okay, we got the Word of God, we got the whole, you know, 66 books of this Bible, this canon that we read, and they just look at His words as um, a way, they just look at it lightly, like it's just um, a fairy tale. Just some words. Or some literature. A story. They just think it's a story or some literature, but it's way, way, way more than that. His word is powerful. And it's action. It's action behind that word. It's powerful action. And see, if you mix his word with faith, whoo, it's activated. It like activated. And he's together. saying that if you keep watering the word, the seed that he put in you, like he put a seed in you to be born again, and we're planting a seed for you to be healed. And we're watering it. So what happens, if you keep watering, this, see God, this is, um, I was reading a verse here in Genesis after the flood about seed time and harvest. I don't know if I can find it real quick. Uh, after the flood, there's always going to be seed time and harvest. What God does, if you, you know, receive his word, you've got to be able to receive his word. He'll put a seed in you. And then it's up to us ministers and teachers who teach the word of God to water that seed. Amen? And when you water it, it says here, what happens, uh, that seed will sprout. Amen? Amen. That seed will sprout out of your heart and start growing up and, and, and reach more people. That's also important that, that Amen. they stay with you and get the word so they won't wander off and be around the thorns and won't be around the rocks. But here's what... Um, things to take the word right out of. Here's what... Here's how they get the word taken out of them. A lot of people say, as long as I'm thinking about something and I'm not doing it, it's not going to hurt me. No, nope. before they knew it, they had it. That is not true. That's a lie. Right. It'll take, all, take over. You're talking about that, is, that is one of the biggest lies that Satan said. That's true. Get in here. Uh, thoughts, are, thoughts are spiritual. Yeah, they are. They are powerful. The very thoughts running through your mind can manifest life or draw you closer to the greatest, your greatest fears. And we know that fear will lead you to sin and sin to death. And sin is from the fear. Amen. That's what you Your thoughts are very important. You know what you're looking at. What's on your mind. See, a thought is not something that you can see. Amen? Amen? It's not something that you can handle. It's not something that you can physically touch with your physical senses. But it's powerful. 
And all thoughts don't come from God. No, they do not. The devil will put a thought in you. He put a thought in, in Eve's mind. Thinking about the, the Yeah, he did, didn't he? Told he told a lie. Well, I he put that thought in her mind yeah, before she knew it. Listen, she was uh, I could be wise like eating of the tree that she shouldn't have been eating of. Let's work on this a while. I got a few verses here. Gobble it up like it was some candy. Let's, let's, let's camp here for a minute. <laughs> Let's just camp here for a minute. Let's camp here for a minute let us camp here for a minute on thoughts. Uh, go with me to Psalm 33. Let's see what the song is saying. I mean, they got a lot of us saying words can't hurt me. Yeah, they can. Now that I want sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yes, they That's a lie, too. Yes, yeah, it's a lie. It sounds good. It rhymes, yeah, it but it's just a lie. Here in uh, Psalm uh, 33, verse 11. It says, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts and plans of his heart through all generations. Blessed, fortunate, and prosperous, and favored by God is the nation whom the Lord, whom, the, whom God is the Lord. The people whom he has chosen as his own inheritance. So it says, if you live in a nation and they're an ungodly nation, that right away puts you on uh, not a good place. Amen? No, it's not a good location. Now, we know America was, it says, in God we trust. It was born on um, the Word of God, but it has strayed. They're just doing everything they want to do now. Now, Psalm 40. There's a lot of evil, wicked people came into the nation. Well, you know, this is a land of the free, right? It's well, not free. Ain't nothing around the free. That's what they say. That's, the, that's a lie right there. Psalm 40, verse 5, says, Many, O Lord my God, are the wonderful works which thou hast done. And your thoughts toward us, there is none to compare with you. If I would declare and speak of your wonderful, of your of your wonders, they would be too many to count. His thoughts, God's thoughts. That was Psalm forty-five. Psalm forty, verse five. It says Psalm 40, Psalm verse 5. 40, verse 5. Psalm 40, verse 5. Oh, that's what I was looking at. Okay. That's the way it reads. Yeah. Reading. Now, look at look over here with uh, Proverbs, the third chapter. We were right there. Uh, a few was in the fourth chapter. Let's look at the third chapter. It says in the first verse, Proverbs 3, 1. It says, My son, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life worth living and tranquility and prosperity, the wholeness of life blessings they will add to you. Praise God for his word. So don't let anybody tell you that you ain't supposed to be around here. You're supposed to, you know, you're going to die when you get 70, 80 years old. I don't know about to tell you that right. It says long life. Mm -hmm. It says, do not let mercy and kindness and truth lead you. Instead, let, them, let these qualities define you. Bind them securely around your neck. Write them on the tables of your heart. So find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. And then it says, trust in, rely confidentially on the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Amen. 
You can't. He said, don't, don't rely on your own understanding. You can't because our thoughts are so far away from the pistol. You need to rely on what God is saying. That's all. You need to trust in the Lord and don't rely on your own mm -hmm. understanding. Uh, the King James says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and right. lean not right. unto thy own understanding. In all his ways acknowledge him, and he will, and he shall direct your path. Right. So we need to trust God, not no man. You stop trusting man. If you've been trusting in some man up until this point in your life, stop trusting him. Calling people on the phone and doing all that. You know what I mean? Don't trust in the telemarketers. Don't trust in none of them people. Oh God, look at I mean, don't even believe what I'm saying. Unless you can put your eyes on it for yourself. And you see that God is saying the same thing. Because I'm not going to make a mistake, right? You will. Liable to. <laughs> Just saying it. You now, already have. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. That's why I kept telling Jeremiah to keep telling him over and over again, you know, to listen. Because they were always trying to talk out of what they want to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your they own understanding. Not the truth. You know? Where you say going, Jeremiah? Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. The 11th verse. It says, I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, That's says right. the Lord. That's right. Plans for peace and well being. And not for disaster. Right. To give you a future and a hope. That's right. Tell them That's what the them. Lord says. He said, I know my thoughts. Right. That I have for you. For us. And then it says, Then will you call on me and will come and pray to me, and I will hear you, your voice. And I will listen to you. Then, with a deep longing, you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity. That's right. Can't even live without. And you will find me when you search for me with all your, your heart. heart. Right. That means that you got to put God's word first. And you have to be looking. You've got to put his word first so up and above everything else. Right. Because see, if you don't, <coughs> you'll get tripped in this world. Right. You will. Seeking for love and all the wrong things. Well, a lot of people say, well, the Lord knows my heart. He knows well, ugly and in Luke, the fifth chapter, the 22nd verse, it says, but God, but when Jesus perceived their thoughts. That's right. Jesus can know what you're thinking about. Go, go, go with me to Luke here, real quick. Ooh, you got to be careful with that mouth. And your thing, your heart is. Well, you're supposed to guard your heart. If you're guarding your heart, and somebody you says something, something to you, saying. you're not gonna say nothing right away until you search it out in the Word of God. Because you're putting God's words first. Right. And if they're and if they're trying to press you for an answer and push you for an answer, no, say you don't have to you don't have to look. See, that's what the devil does. He presses and pushes you for an answer right away. You don't have to do it. But you don't have to answer them. You don't have to say nothing. Here in uh, Matthew the fifth chapter. It says, in, uh, I'm going to start at the uh, 17th verse. It says, one day he was teaching. There were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present with him to heal them, to heal King James says, to heal them. Just like the power of the Lord is right here tonight. All these things, all these verses that we have uh, went over. He, the power of the Lord is, if you, if you can get within the sound of my voice and believe what I'm saying and what we're reading to you, 
The power of the Lord is here tonight to heal you. Only thing you have to do is mix faith with it, and you can get healed. And then it says, some men came carrying on a stretcher a man who had who was paralyzed, and they tried to bring him in and lay him down in front of Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the rooftop and removed some of the towels to make an opening and lowered him through the towels which his stretcher, with his stretcher, into the midst of the crowd. In front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their active faith springing from confidence in him, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven. People don't have no problem with that. Amen. But Jesus, knowing their hostile thoughts, answered them, Why are you questioning these things? in your heart. See, that's what happens a lot of times when we're teaching on healing or we're teaching on faith or love or whatever. Uh, people are questioning these things in their heart. Yeah. And we, we're giving you all the scriptures. But see, um, you have a choice to believe God or believe what some man is telling you. Amen? You have a choice. You can do like Adam and Eve. You can believe the serpent who was more subtle and crafty than any creature that the Lord made and, and believe a lie. Amen? That's right. So he said, uh, when Jesus, it says, uh, verse 22, but Jesus, knowing their hostile thoughts, answered them, why are you questioning these things in your heart? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven you, or to say get up and walk? But in order that you may know that the Son of Man, the Messiah, has authority to, and power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralyzed man, I say unto you, get up, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He immediately stood up before them, picked up his stretcher, and went home glorifying and praising God. Amen? So Jesus knows your thoughts. That was the point. Jesus knows your thoughts. It says in the NIV, Jesus knew what they were thinking. So if he knows your thoughts, he knows what you're thinking. Yes, he does. You know if you're for real or not. Uh, go with me to Second Corinthians, uh, the 10th chapter here real quick. Because a lot of people got this thing in their mind that they don't realize that there is a, a spiritual warfare going on. It's not a carnal warfare. The words of uh, the, the fight is with the words. Amen? Amen. It says here in uh, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3, uh, For though we walk in the flesh as mortal, mortal man, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. The weapons of our warfare are, are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful to the destruction of fortresses. The King James says, the pulling down of strongholds. And then it says, I almost stand the King James, it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. So, when these thoughts hit your mind, and you put God's word first in your life, because you're attending to his words. So you're putting his word first in your life, and it don't line up with what God is saying. It says, it literally, 
cast them down or throw them down. Don't think about it. Don't think on those things. Amen? Paul says in Philippians, the fourth chapter, here's what we should be thinking about. Amen? Amen. Paul, the fourth chapter, he said, think on these things. We're not supposed to be thinking on all these fourth ungodly chapter. things. Fourth chapter of what? Of, of Philippians. Philippians, the fourth chapter. Paul said, think on these things. A first. It's like a good place to close to. Philippians. God wants us to think on these things. Not all this junk going on in the world. All these lies and deceit. Amen. It says here in the fourth of eighth verse, finally believers. Whatsoever is true, we know that the word is true. Amen? Jesus, Amen. matter of fact, Jesus said, I have the, the truth, the way, and the life. That's right, it's true. And we know the word became flesh. Amen. It's word. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever things are honorable and worthy of respect, whatso whatsoever is right and Confirmed by God's word. You, you hear that? Whatsoever things are right and confirmed by God's word. Just don't eat up everything and, and swallow it. See if it's lining up with God's word. If it's not, you believe it. Whatsoever things are pure and wholesome. That, that covers a whole lot of things because you know there's a lot of things that people are doing around here are not pure. They're not. They're very ungodly. Ungodly. And whatsoever things is lovely and brain speaks. You know, there's a lot of ugly people in the world. They don't have no love in them, and they don't want you to have no love and no peace in your life. Yeah. Whatsoever is a marvel and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continuously on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. So that's that eighth chapter. Start planting all them seeds in your heart and see how your life will change. Because we know that God's word is true. And once you've been walking with God a while, now I'm not saying that I know everything, but if, if a thought hits my mind and it seems a little strange, you know, it hasn't hit me before. I haven't thought about that before. I gotta look at the word of God to see how this is lining up, right? But for all them good thoughts that sit in my mind, I'm thanking God all the way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for watching over my family. Thank you for putting a roof over my head. Thank you, Lord, for putting food on my table. Thank you, Lord, for putting clothes on my back. Thank you, Lord, for letting me drive this new car. You, thank you. Praising him. I'm not bragging on myself. I'm bragging on the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We'll see you next week.